Redditors assemble. R slash ask Reddit. Zookeepers of Reddit. How are the animals acting differently now that there are no visitors to the zoo? Most of our animals are happy as long as we can keep their routines. Feeding times etc. For some they need a little extra. We do public encounters with our koalas, wombats and snakes among others so we spend an hour or so a day cuddling and handling these animals to keep them happy. A few of our koalas really fret if they don't get their cuddles. Otherwise we just try to continue to spend time with animals that are expecting human interaction and of course we can take things for walks around the place like I'm sure you've seen at other zoos. Our wombats love a run and sniff, dingoes as well. Your job is to cuddle koalas. And I'm stuck in home all alone. At least you don't have chlamydia. Kangaroo Island's koalas are the only chlamydia free population in Australia. Not to mention you'd be hard pressed to catch it unless you were doing unspeakable things to a koala, um. For a lot of our animals, having the ability to interact with guests is actually extremely important. Even for primates to be able to play with kids through the glass, they are missing out on a lot of enrichment. Guests keep a lot of the monkeys entertained. I watch our guests all day long show our marmosets and capuchin selfie cameras and they love to see their reflection. Guests will also show videos on their phones to animals and the monkeys totally enjoy it. We have a rescue cockatoo named Ro who sings row 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 your boat to guests. When little kids dance and sing it to her, she gets really excited and feeds off their energy. So do our other cockatoos on exhibit. But now without guests to show off for, every now and then when it's quiet we'll hear her start row row row. And then she stop and huffs a bit and gets really quiet and sad, because she has no one to sing to. Some of our animals really miss having kids to show off for. You also have to remember that animals and zoos for the most part have grown up totally accustomed to being around people 24-7. They're not wild animals at all really. They've grown up in a very different social dynamic. Quite a few animals get noticeably depressed in the winter months every year when we have few guests and then perk up in the spring when we get busy. Any chance you could live a stream row and see if she'll sing? I'll happily be her audience. Oh my gosh I would love to- She's so hard to get a video of sometimes, because she very sporadic when she decides to sing, but I'll definitely try. P. LOL a zoom meeting with a parrot. For charity? In our local zoo the apes started to miss the visitors so they brought in an artist in who's now just painting in the empty monkey house so the apes have someone to watch. They need a TV in Sesame Street. Just put on a Planet of the Apes marathon and they'll be happy for hours. Don't give them ideas. Due to temporary staff cuts, they no longer have the people to regularly walk the wombats. Some of the wombats are holding the keepers personally responsible. Imagine having a 20 kilogram chunk of muscle with big rodent teeth mad at you. Can confirm. I'm not happy with the current situation. Oh shit, they are amongst us. Giving the wombats internet access is an interesting experiment in animal enrichment. It may have been a mistake not blocking peen hub, though. The credit card charges have been astronomical. I'm an aquarium keeper, and I've certainly noticed a change. Fish are not as stressed as they used to be, as there are no longer children stomping around and banging on glass screaming Nemo, Nemo, it's Nemo at every clonefish. We brought some of our younger penguins down to let them watch the fish, and they were intrigued, but confused as to why they couldn't catch them through the glass. Our octopus has become much more friendly as well, and, instead of hiding all day from people, enjoys playing with small baby toys or solving food puzzles. It's been nice. I wish there were guidelines people had to sign to behave at zoos before entering, but at the same time, they are the lifeline we so desperately need to keep functioning. Fellow octopus keeper here. Without the crowd scaring her into her cave, our GPO has gotten straight up feisty. She's so active. I've encouraged our parrot keepers to go past her when taking the birds on walks just for a little extra visual stimulation. She's got quite the love affair with one of the cockatoos. We just have a little bimuk, and I think that yes, he has really enjoyed the new LED I installed over their tank. I try and change it up throughout the day, to give her a bit more fun when nothing is really going on. She seems to enjoy blue a lot. 
That's adorable. We used to have color changing LEDs over the jellies that we took down. Might see if the curator will let me dig them out of storage and hook them up. My girlfriend is a zookeeper and animal behaviorist. She says their animals are becoming stressed. One of their African grey birds has been plucking his own feathers. She also mentioned that, because they can't touch many of the animals due to the virus potentially spreading to another zookeeper, many of the animals are looking and acting depressive, not eating well, etc. That's it everyone. You're making the birds sad. You all are in timeout. But them being in timeout is what's making the birds sad. God damn it. This made me sad. I'm terrified of birds. But they still need love too damn it. My wife works at the gift shop for our zoo and the other day we had to go move some stuff around in the store. Because due to some heavy rains, it had flooded a bit. Of course we took a lap around the empty park other than the keepers and few maintenance workers. And found that all the animals were really active and playful. A lot of them seemed really curious about us too. I'm sure they get used to seeing crowds every day and were starving for attention. I've been in a zoo early when no one else was around and the animals were all super active and engaging. Yeah, they usually get fed in the mornings, so there is a lot of foraging going on. Personally my favorite time to go is on a sunny winter day. BC they stay active throughout the day as opposed to the summer where they stay up long enough to eat and then find some shade. I certainly don't blame them. Or maybe two people is a more manageable number to approach. If I see one cat on a footpath, I'm going to try and make a new friend. If I see 12, I'm going to cross the road to avoid them. As a zookeeper coordinator I've been working at the now closed zoo almost every day for the past month. Animals that are free roaming, peacocks, iguanas, are more active, and follow keepers around like they usually do with visitors. Most of the others don't show much change in behavior. Although birds like swans and flamingos are using the edges of their habitats more. True. I haven't found much change in pets or those animals that are being well taken care of. I have noticed that this has mostly affected stray animals whose only source of food was by eating all they found on the streets, parks. Since, nobody is around, they don't get food sad face. I do my best by feeding like 10-12 stray dogs who come to eat at our farm. It makes my day watching them eat. Hi whoa hello there. You'll have to get married now. The two pygmy hippos, six bison, giant anteater, and lowland taper I took care of I'm temporarily laid off. Didn't have any change in behavior. Sulcatus are still assholes. How are sulcatus assholes? They're just always in the way whenever you try to do anything. Raking up leftover hay? Let me just plop myself right on top. Need to dump and change our water? I just decided I need a bath. Just filled our water? Let me take a piss in it. Trying to hose the enclosure? Let me repeatedly clothesline myself. Trying to scrub my shit stains off the floor? I need to be on top of it now. And take another shit. Another tortoise is bleeding? Let me try to eat his foot overnight. Another tortoise is trying to eat my bleeding foot? Let me just sit here until someone finds me in the morning and not try to move or get away. Trying to bandage up my bleeding foot and provide antibiotics? Now's the time for me to struggle and thrash around oh you installed heat lamps to help my healing process? I'm gonna sit in this corner and go on a hunger strike. Stuff like that. The guests love them though. They're likely the most popular of all the animals I took care of. So, it's basically a torty cat. I get why they are popular. I work on an activity farm. There is a 22 year old shy horse. He acts like a dong when there are customers around. With no customers, he's actually still a dong. That being said, he's still awesome. There was a horse at the stables where my daughter used to ride. He would pretend like he needed to pee just to get out of having to make a go around the ring. The teacher would start counting and he would either start moving or pee. LOL. He was hilarious. Edited to add. Whoa. I'm amazed by the upvotes. I think my most upvoted comment before this was like 250 people. Thanks. How exactly does a horse act when they need to pee? They will stand still. 
put their hind legs back very far, and pull up their tail and then they wait basically. Not a zookeeper, but I hear the lions a lot more from my house now. Weirdly reassuring to wake up to and realize the world is still going on. Wait what? Do you live on the plains of Africa, next to the GW Zoo, or do you own lions? Nothing that exotic. Sorry to disappoint. I live very close to a large zoo in the UK no Carol Baskin-esque dramas. The city's gotten pretty quiet with all the events going on so the zoo noises are a lot more prominent. Can just about see the orangutans rolling about and playing hide and seek with their blankets outside if I shimmy out the villox onto the roof. Man. That's an oddly great benefit to a house's location. Finally a thread I can answer. Not a whole lot of change. But animals definitely missing out some enrichment of seeing guests, especially the otters that follow the kids in the glass underwater. Taken, maned wolves, bison, gibbons, bopies, lions, etc. all are about the same. Some of our animals that are skittish have been standing closer to the fence where guests usually are. Zebras, gazelle, which is nice. It's kinda this weird balance of being both more and less stressed. On the one side, I don't have to worry about keeper talks or BTS tours and I have more time to get everything done and spend more time with animals. On the other side we're skeleton crude and there's less of us to care for the whole zoo so I'm working a lot more in areas I don't usually cover as often. There's one kangaroo that still tries to box me while the emu is shifting the one peacock still really doesn't like taking his medications of course. I have noticed that the crows in the city are behaving a bit differently as well and are being a lot braver lol. I've taken to feeding the birds since this whole thing started and the crows used to be pretty okay with the seagulls barreling in and talking food cause there was always more than enough. Now I see crows scouting and scooping up multiple pieces of food at a time to bring wherever they're hiding the flock, risking getting snapped at by rabbit seagulls. I would only rarely see crows take the food away, and it was always after they'd eaten plenty. Now 9 out of 10 times they're squirreling it away. Oh shit, that hadn't occurred to me. Seagulls basically live off human food from beachgoers, parking lots, etc. They've got to be starving. Well they're acting like our souls, but that's always the case so it's hard to tell. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video please smash the like button and leave a comment which story you liked the most. Subscribe and hit the bell notification for updates on our latest videos. And don't forget to check the links in the description box for more awesome content.